Okay, we are going to start off with a very easy text to give you a run at doing all of the annotations for a running record. When you introduce a book, of course, you want a very quick, brief book introduction. Um, sometimes teachers will say, let's look at this cover. What do you think this book is gonna be about? There is a time and place for kids to predict on text, but when you're introducing a new book, they don't have anything to link it to. So there's really no reason for them to start guessing based on a cover. Um, actually, it might plant some ideas in their head that have nothing to do with the book, and it could lead them down the wrong path when they get stuck. So when you're introducing a book for the first time, you are the one in charge. You're the one providing the book introduction. So for example, when you're doing a book introduction, you're going to always start with the title and tell them the title. Can I see Tom? This book is called Can I See Tom? And I see a little girl here looking under a bed that gives me a clue as to what might be going on here. And this is a story about two friends that are play playing hide and seek. And we were right, she is looking for her friend, Tom. She's looking at closets and cabinets. Did she find him here? No, oh, think about what she found here. Hmm, I wonder if she found him in here. Oh, she turns the light on. That's not Tom, is it? That's a mop. Oh, what does she spot down here? Do you think she found Tom? She did, now it's his turn to be it. So let's quick find some words that you know in this story because there's a lot of words that you already know. Let's find the word can. Put your fingers around, sorry, I would already be on that page. Put your fingers around the word can. And when I say put your fingers around that, I'm saying frame it with two fingers, like your two pointer fingers are parallel and you're asking your children to frame the word can. And so they're isolating that word between two fingers. All right, so what you're doing here is you're just giving kids um, an opportunity to succeed and feel good about the book that they're getting ready to read because they're going to know that there are words in this book that they already know. When you have struggling readers, when they're getting ready to tackle a brand new book, it can be intimidating. So let's give them some anchors and give them the opportunity to feel good about things that are coming up in that text, which are one, two, three at the very most words that they know. So on this one, I would say, find the word C. You know the word C. And again, they would put two fingers around the word C to frame the word C. Now let's find some words that are unknown but you want to set them up for success without giving them everything. So think about words that they might get hung up on that um, are going to be maybe critical to the book, but also not taking away all of the word work. So on this page, I might say the word not is on this page. Think about what you would see at the beginning of the word not. Notice that I said, think about what you would see because spelling is a very um, auditory task. And when they think about what the word not looks like, they can be thinking about, I've seen that word before. So getting them to kind of pull from their memory bank, they've seen the word not, they've probably written the word not. Now we're gonna ask them to think about what you would see at the beginning of the word not, not. And again, having them frame that word and you can support them if they need it because it's a, a new word or an unknown word and showing them not getting them to pull that whole word out from beginning to end and then saying are you right by the way prompting them when you say are you right doing that when they're right and when they're not right because if you only do it when they're wrong they're going to automatically just assume that prompt is telling them that they're wrong so when you ask them to do it when they're right and when they're wrong, it compels them to check the whole word on their own. Now you might want to plant the word socks or maybe you want to see what they do when they get to the word socks. 
I plant it, you can plant it in your um, book introduction when you can just kind of, when you're breezy through here, oh, she sees his socks, I bet she found him. And then you just go on, or you can have them locate the word socks. You can say, oh, I can see she finds the she finds socks on this page. Can you find the word socks in the text? Or you can do none of that and just see what they do when they get to that page. And then you're going to be able to get a lot of information about the reading work that they're doing on their own. So up to you, you know the kids best. So we're gonna go back to the beginning of the book. And again, the teacher always reads the title. The title is not part of the running record. So you're going to read the title and then the rest is up to them. I put a little pointy finger here to demonstrate that that is where the child is reading and the child should be pointing so you know where they are as you're taking your running record. So again, I'm going to start by reading the title. Okay, can I see Tom? Oh, I see the question mark there too. You might wanna comment on the question mark there. So the child is going to, going to start reading and you are going to start your running record. Are you ready? Here we go. I am now the child reading. I am in. One, two, three, four, five. Um, Tom, I can see you. Is Tom on? Is Tom on top? Tom. It is Tom. It is a pan. Can I see Tom? It is Tom. It is a mop. It is, it is not, not Tom. I can see Tom. I can see Tom's socks. You, I can see you, Tom. Tom is in one, two, three, four, five. How did you do? By the way, as students are reading through their text and you're taking a running record, you do not interrupt. You do not jump in, no matter how tempting it is. There are times where it will be appropriate for you to jump in, but you want to give them every opportunity to fix it themselves. For example, when we were on page four, and the reader was working on the word Tom, trying to pull this word out, going t, t, and then they stopped for a while. You're not gonna jump in. If, they, if you jump in too fast, they're going to know you're gonna save them. So get in the habit of letting them work it out because eventually the reader did get it. T, um, Tom. If you would have jumped in when they stopped and you were waiting, there was some wait time there. If you would have given the word Tom, you took away all of the reading work for the child. Um, another time where you would not wanna jump in um, is on page 13. 
the child might not be super used to seeing an apostrophe S here. And so when the child got to this word, he or she said, Tom, and a lot of times we just wanna jump in because that's just how we are. And we wanna say, this one's Tom's, give them an opportunity. The child stopped. So you know that they noticed something. When they stop, they're self-monitoring. That's huge. They're doing some thinking. That stop, that wait time, that quick little blip of silence does not cue you to speak. It cues you to sit there and be patient and watch what they do because they're noticing something. Look at how powerful it was when the child noticed that there was something different about this Tom and they went back to the beginning to reread. That is a huge success, super powerful. They got stuck, they knew to go back, and then they reread, I can see Tom's socks. By the way, the other thing you wanna do then is celebrate that they went back and reread and self-corrected. Don't do that in the middle of the word work or the reading work. Wait until the end of the running record. Go back and then celebrate it. That's the time to do it. Do you do not want to interrupt their thinking or what's going on in the story? So you really do have to bite your tongue a lot. So the next thing we'll do is we will double check to see how our running records compare. 